Could you tell us your name and um, what you do? Wow, okay. And as a researcher, what is the importance of this conference, particularly this uh, panel, to you? Um, first and foremost, it helps in advancing um, whatever research that, in my case, we are already embarking on. It's good to hear the different perspectives that still speak to ICT and what others are doing so that in the future when we are all progressing towards um, the ICT environment, we recognize that in our case, for instance, all hope is not lost based on the kind of data that we have, that um, investment is not made and so there's a very big gender gap. Um, it's good to hear that there are NGOs that are... Um, putting in so much to make sure that the, the landscape of ICT reaches every other person. So knowing that there's hope is good for us at least, so that it's f moving forward, we are able to share our research work with just not academics, but people in the ICT environment as well, so that together, because I mean, that's the end goal of, of research. It shouldn't sit on the shelves, but then there should be some progression from the kind of data that we, we collect. So this, this conference comes as an opportunity to meet other people doing other things with ICT so that together we can network and progress. Yeah. Um, could you please tell us your name and what you do? Kwame Kufuan of Nto is my name. Um, I'm an independent researcher with the University of Toronto. There is a project called Media Politics and Representation in Africa. And uh, we research into media and politics, the political economy of communication and media. And um, quite a number of researchers are involved in this project. And Professor Tete is, is, is the one, is the lead researcher in, in, uh, in, in, in the project. And so um, in many ways, this conference coincides with our focus. We look at how media, communication and technology uh, impacts our lives. We look at this political economy and the politics around questions of legislation and policy. And we are also particularly interested in ways in which technology acts as a, as a, as, as a base to, as it were, giving democracy some more expression. Because, I mean, increasingly people have assumed that the presence of technology will solve all our problems, but it's not necessarily the case. And as we keep finding out in this conference, the, even if there are communicative spaces which have been expanded, there is still, there has to be a conscious effort on the part of policymakers to ensure that there's literacy, to ensure that there are a variety of voices that are being represented in a narrative. And if we don't do that, then of course, our, our democracy is in trouble. And as Professor Tuguba said, we need to go back to, to the basis to get these things done. So we, we do all these things. And you'd be surprised that a former electoral commissioner of a country is also part of our research team. So that gives you, that tells you the scope, you know, of, 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 of our research, yeah. yeah. You kind of doubled into my second question. I was going to ask what it means for you to be part of this panel. Right. Being with all of these other practitioners and scholars who have Ghana's tech future right. in mind. What, what was the experience like for you? Well, I think, I think it's been useful. I mean, so far it, it tells you the interdisciplinary nature of our research, that whichever way you look, we are connected. And it's just a matter of emphasis, all right? So you find somebody who is talking about how institutions should work, and the, reason, and, the, and, and, the, and the solution he proposes is that we should go back to the Constitution. That's, that's Professor Tugubert's keynote, all right? For us, we can make the argument that media regulation in this country needs to be looked at as an institution, all right? That it has, it has faltered badly, and if we want to be able to get people to be involved in decision making and be part, I mean, let's say that if, if, if we want to understand that access is not just having access to a signal, but it also involves participation, then there has to be a conscious effort to empower the person who is participating in the process, okay? And that doesn't just happen. It comes through critical thinking, it comes through legislation, it comes through careful policy, and all these things come together to make it happen. So, so it's so, it's so very important, if you ask me. Hi, can Hello. you tell us your name and um, what you do? 
Okay, so my name is Sela Ajay, and I teach at the National Film and Television Institute. I'm with the multimedia department, but today I joined the panel as a representative for AI for Africa. And AI for Africa, um, like I said during the discussion, is an international consortium of um, professionals, both here on the African continent and in the diaspora. And it's made up of scholars, philosophers, um, psychologists, app developers, gender activists, people who work in the policy space, lawyers, and generally professionals who tend to provide solutions to some of the problems we face in our tech spaces, you know, creating more equity and bridging the diversity gap and also uh, promoting more inclusivity within the technology spaces. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thank you for that. Yes. And uh, being here today with these other panelists, uh, what has been the experience like for you? How important was this uh, conference and the panel in particular to you as a researcher who has um, an interest in Ghana's tech future? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of take-home uh, information that um, converges at a point because we are all talking about similar issues when it comes to Ghana's tech future, okay? So my co-panelists spoke about several issues which um, fell on the borderline of equality in our tech spaces. I think that was one of the... Um, central themes within the discussion and then also safety and sustainable uh, technologies that can um, preserve our well-being so in terms of you know how impactful this uh, panel discussion has been I would say that we are all you know picking up from where uh, we left off because we are discussing similar issues and it, it speaks to the importance of you know technology corporations people in the industry and academics speaking to each other to be able to find lasting solutions to the various challenges we face and like uh, we you know raised in our discussion AI and technology seems to have like a double-sided face on the outside they just project the good of AI and technology, but people are not critical about the ethics, the morality, and the safety about some of these systems. So I think it was great to have this discussion so that the conversation continues and then we can find you know, more common grounds to be able to solve all our problems. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Okay. My name is Atuel Zanapia. I am a social entrepreneur. I lead the Ghana Think Foundation. We are a social enterprise in the youth empowerment space with programs for young people in networking, mentoring, training, and volunteering. Um, what has the experience been like for you today, joining this panel with other like-minded people who have Ghana's tech future in mind and at heart? Well, I, I think there's a diversity of you know, opinions um, amongst the people who are here. Uh, so I think that is great. Uh, I think we're all here to learn, right? Um, I mean, at Ghana, I think we always talk about learning, right? We can, we always continue to learn. So hearing different things allows us to be able to even do what we are doing better. Um, so I think it's been great, you know, hearing what uh, people have to say about Ghana's tech futures and um, especially how we can build towards envisioning the Ghana that we want. Please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Uh, uh, my name is Sarah Avle. I am an assistant professor at uh, the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, I study the design and uses of digital technologies, um, mainly in parts of Africa, China, and the US. So I think about who's collaborating with who to make digital technologies, how it's being used, and to what effect. As a researcher, yes. what has been the experience like being on this panel, first as a moderator and mm. as a contributor, and also sitting there with people who have Ghana's tech future in mind and at heart? Well, I mean, I wish we had more time, right? That's my first thing, because we put, we put them on two panels for a reason. Um, there's a lot to say about the research. As you heard, everybody's doing really interesting work. Um, so I would have loved for the researchers to unpack more of their work. And then the practitioners are in different sectors too, right? So it would have been great to hear more. But 
I, I think we, we managed to rally, <laughs> right? We had a conversation of some sort um, and the conversations have continued. I, I don't know if you caught it in the background, but uh, experts were talking to each other and it was, you know, so on that level, I think it was successful. Um, and hopefully when we meet people, they'll also talk about it. So we can put this video out, right? And, and generate conversation about technologies. Um, and Ghana, Ghana being at the crossroads just mean to, to us, it means, you know, where, where does Ghana go? The fact that this technology doesn't mean we have to use it in the same way that other people are using it, right? So we have to be mindful and critical in thinking about how can we use technology for Ghana's good in a way that benefits everybody, not just, you know, elites or, you know, people or people like me who are in academia already. You know, we need to include everybody. So how does technology lift everyone up? Because it's possible but it can be done by itself. Technologies amplify whatever is underlying in society. So if we as a society decide that we want a more inclusive, more beneficial society, that's how we will use technology, right? But if we decide that we're going to keep fighting each other or whatever, then that's how technology will be used to look at around the world. It's being, technology can be used anyhow. So <laughs> it's up to us as Ghanaians to be mindful and critical about how we include technology in our media, in our daily lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hi, could you please introduce yourself? Tell us what you do as well. I'm Wisdom Tete and um, I serve as Vice President of the University of Toronto and also a political science professor uh, at the University of Toronto Scarborough. And uh, my research is on media and politics, civic engagement uh, and uh, technologies and as they pertain to uh, politics and civic engagement. So that's my work. And as a researcher, interested in Ghana's tech futures, how has this conference or this panel been like to you, the experience and, 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 and being together with all of these other like-minded uh, presenters and panelists? Yeah, I think it did exactly what I expect, which is an opportunity to engage in some of the critical questions that look at the intersection between technology and society uh, and to have the academics they're sharing what we do best which is theorize those things but engaging with practitioners who are in the field who are on the ground and trying to see the extent to which our scholarship gets validated or challenged uh, by those who are working in the field but also being able to share with them our perspectives on how technology and its use uh, in society needs to be thought about right uh, it's not just about the technology but we look at the broader ecosystem of what it is that shapes those artifacts right so for me it was just a great bringing together the right people talking about the right things asking the right questions and critically engaging in what it is that this means in the particular context of, of Ghana and being able to extrapolate from the Ghanaian context into other places where we do our research right so it's not just about narrow Ghana focus. It's about what do you learn from the Ghanaian experience that you can extrapolate from into other places? And what do you bring from other contests to shape the Ghanaian contest as well? Okay. All right. All right. That's all. Thank all you right. so much.